Hey everyone, Andrew at Microphonic Designs here joining you today at the John B. Alexander High School Band Hall. And I am bringing you the walkthrough of pretty much the biggest system, or, or most complex system rather, that uh, I'll have worked on this year. This was a full, pretty much a full two day setup. I got in Tuesday of this week. We worked like a 12 hour day yesterday getting this thing set up and then we did a lot of staff training today as well as finishing up all the loose ends and we're pretty much there. there's a little bit more work i need to do in the mixing console but um other than that uh it's pretty much finished up so to start with the mixer cart here is fairly the same i uh, adjusted a few things in the back uh cleaned it up a little bit and made sure that these uh, quick connect panels were good to go the quick connect panels on the front are, of course, linked to the back and the power and everything. Um, <clears throat> this group has rather large speaker stacks. Uh, we've got uh, RCF line array units here uh, for both side one and side two. And so we've got the Proco Siamese Twin uh, combo cables running to the back. You'll see it runs up and then kind of splits off. And, uh, and yeah, this is pretty much uh, how we've got this. <laughs> so two speaker stacks both identical side two over there or side one rather is uh like i said the exact same <clears throat> and then they've also got uh, a center sub as well that i have set up here with the second panel so they don't have any of the combo cables uh they've got two extras that are broke um so that big pile there is broken combo cable um but once they get some new ones, a replacement, we'll be able to uh, run audio to the sub. I've got that all set up in the routing. Um, and let me walk you through the keyboard cabling as well. I changed this up quite a bit from how I've had it because uh, I think I've done a couple videos here at this school in the past. So what we have is uh, modular snake number one contains uh, the cabling for marimba two, three, and four. So the microphone cables down there converge in to the middle. So there's the, the breakout cable. And then we have the two vibraphones, vibes three and four in the back, come forward along this jumper cable. And let me step over here to give you a better look at what's going on. So here we go. So again, all the cables from Roma's two, three, and four meet right here. I've got the jumper cables for the vibraphones three and four and they come in here is the uh the core cable and uh i hooked them up with a 50 foot cable because the one that they had the pins were all mashed and broke and so we can follow this core cable along and here by the way is the mashed um you guys see that see those mashed pins that happens occasionally it's very rare but it can happen so yeah modular snake comes in here and goes into their S32, which is there in the synth cart. The synth carts are definitely where I did the bulk of the work. Uh, so again, that's pod number one, is uh, again, marimba's two, three, four, the vibes back there. Marimba one here, these cables come forward, and it's a little cramped right now because we're inside, but I've got a set of um, jumper cables here. So there we go, so you can see those cables meet. Just like that so this comes back to vibe number two connects there vibe two carries all these cables adds its own mic these come all the way over here to vibraphone one which is where uh here we go here's a good view so this is a junction point on vibe number one that contains the cabling for again marimba one high and low vibe two it's got its own cable and then in the back let me show you this and you can kind of sneak peek this with the stands uh, we're using four shotgun mics and i've got the stands color coded you see i got the yellow and the green on those and the orange on the one back there um, so the stands are color coded the shotgun mics are color coded and then once they figure out um exactly where these need to be how far away from vibe one and everything we'll get the cables color coded <coughs> and uh, the shotgun mics plug in right here on Vibe 1. And so all of those go into a short modular snake. Uh, let me just go back around here so I'm not 
doing weird angles with the camera. <clears throat> so the mod snake from Vibe 1 meets right here and it jumps over. So we've got um, the red snake and the white snake. Here we go. So red snake is the pod over there with the three marimbas and the two vibes. White is shotgun mics, two vibes and a marimba. Those all go into the S32. And then this is, and that's kind of the, the simple part. I also have, um, I've got four channels of wireless set up for them in the Synth 2 cart. So these are available for them to use should they decide to, and they very well might. So I got these color coded red, white, blue, yellow. And I have a bundle of cables that comes out the side here, red, white, blue, and yellow. And there are four available channels on the S32 right in there, those four for wireless if they need to use them. Um, where it gets a little complex is with uh, the software and all that. So what I want to do to kind of demonstrate this is actually, I'm going to, I've been listening to uh, Metallica lately. So I'm going to play some Metallica and go back and let me get back on the Wi-Fi. Here we go. Gotta get that hotspot going. Okay, so let me play some Metallica. So on the console, bus, buses nine through 16, I got their three subwoofers set up here. So center sub, side one sub, side two sub. I don't know if y'all can hear that through the phone, but these are the sub volumes. And again, the center one's not plugged in right now. We have the mains. Okay. So that is our, just our regular speaker stacks, our left and our right. Um, all the line array units are being fed from the main. And again, the subs are from uh, buses uh, 10 and 11. We also have synth monitors here. So, so bus 15 feeds synth one, uh, the monitor for synth one, and bus 16 feeds the synth monitor for um, synth two. So bus 16 feeds synth two. And I don't have uh, the Synth 2 speaker plugged in right now. Um, so we're, we're gonna only hear sound from the Synth 1, but you guys hear that? Sounds horrible, but that's okay. There's a tiny speaker. All right, so those are our Synth monitors. And where it gets really complex is buses one through eight, these are all outputs to Cubase. So let me grab the tablet. I have, um, I've got the control app loaded up here. So let's walk over here and I'm gonna demo some stuff. This is really akin, this is very similar to what Richardson High School had. If you, if you saw the video I did over there where we were just sending stuff into Cubase. So I have Cubase set up on the laptop here. And again, if we, uh, on our control app, let me see if I can get the glare out of there. So if we go into bus nine through 16, again, over here, that's our synth monitor. Um, bus one through eight. So I'm currently feeding all of these buses signal from auxiliary five and six, cause that's like where the iPod channel is, the laptop channel for music. Um, but the idea here is that we have um, basically eight different channels of audio coming into Cubase. The first two are for um, a keyboard mix. So if the show designer wants to do some fancy processing in Cubase, you'll see there, I've got keyboard mix. So I'm gonna turn up the bus here for the keyboard mix in the console. So this is buses one and two that's sending audio out of outputs one and two. So again, the keyboard mix would come out of the two red cables there. You'll now see we're getting audio for the keyboard mix. And if I, I'm gonna turn, so I'm gonna point the camera at, at Cubase at the screen of the computer. I'm gonna turn down the keyboard mix and turn up. This, is, this would be shotgun number one, the first shotgun mic, so the blue one. So if you look over here, again, I'm gonna turn down the keyboard mix that goes away and turn up shotgun three, and you'll see right there, or shotgun number one, 
there it is. Shotgun two, three, and four. So now they have control in the console over what microphone sound sources go into Cubase. And if we wanted to do a mix of the wireless microphones that I mentioned that they have that are optional, again, they've got a couple channels in Cubase right there for the wireless mix, right there. And so the show designer can load up Cubase and put whatever he wants to do. Now, what's really nice about doing it this way is that the ensemble now has sort of redundancy where we can get audio from all of these microphones straight to the speakers, whether that's wireless soloists, the shotgun mics in the back, and of course the regular keyboard mics, all of those can pass straight through the console to our main left and right speaker stacks, or they have the ability to do the pre-fader bus send. So again, in this, in this manner, what I would want to do, so for example, if these were any of the microphones that I've, I've mentioned, we would want to go into sends, make sure they're all pre-fader. So we would set this to pre, pre, and let's do pre-fader. The reason that we want it to be pre-fader is because um, if we are going to send audio to Cubase, we would only want to hear the sound coming from Cubase, not the, the direct channel, right? So what we'd want to do is turn down the main channel. Audio is still coming into the channel, but we're turning down the main, the main faders for that one. And you'll see here that the buses are still receiving audio, again, because we have a pre-fader send. So we're sending a copy of these channels to the buses before it gets to the fader right here that controls that channel. So again, if we wanted to do a wireless microphone mix, we could in Cubase, we could turn down the wireless mic channels with that pre-fader send, turn up uh, buses seven and eight, and over here in Cubase, you'll see wireless mix, there it is, it's receiving audio, it's processing audio. And back over here in the console, if we look at channels 25 through 32, you'll see these right here, wireless left and wireless right coming from Cubase. And then we would turn these up. And there we go. And if we, uh, if we turn up the mains, we hear Metallica. And this is audio. So watch this. If I hit this button right here, no more Metallica. It's going through the laptop. So the audio is going into the console, out of the console, into Cubase, and back to the X32 crazy stuff it took a lot of effort to figure this out you don't even want to see the back of there i've kept it as clean as i can but uh yeah we've got our synth synth inputs here so synth one comes out of cubase one and two synth two goes out of cubase three and four and then down here we've got cubase five six seven eight nine and ten so we have maxed out the outputs that the focus right gives us and that's again for synth one synth two keyboard mix shotgun mix and uh, wireless mix, mm, excuse me. And uh, yeah, I got a bunch of outputs going from the console into Cubase. These two here are our synth monitor uh, cables. Nuts, y'all. That's, that's the bulk of it. Um, and then, you know, I've got like a little, like the, the synth cable goes through the, the little cutout and everything. And I've got a power cable here that lives in this cart that goes to the second synth cart as well. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's taken some effort to get this one uh, set up. So that is the gist of it. Let me um, go back into our bus sends here and just turn this down. And so again, if we look through the channels, like we got our marimbas, you know, these would all uh, like, or rather if we look at buses uh, one and two, uh, let's see, am I able to look at it this way? Maybe not. I wanted to see what all channels were going to this, but um, maybe the easier way to show you is uh, at the console. So let's go back over here. Just as one last like note about all this. So in the console, if we look at buses one through eight and we select bus, bus one, again, one and two are linked, right? We can hit um, 
sends on fader and we see that I've got all of the marimbas and all of the vibraphones going to buses one and two. So that would allow us to send a keyboard microphone mix to Cubase. Um, I've got shotgun mics on these four channels, which is uh, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And so if we select the buses, you know, three, four, five, and six, you'll see that those are the individual shotgun mics going to those buses. And then the last thing I have here is the wireless mix. So that's kind of the idea. And I'm gonna have to make sure all of that's pre-fader. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So a little bit of a longer walkthrough. Again, the bulk of it was getting this synth cart figured out with all of the inputs and outputs. I spent like an hour and a half in the routing in the X32 trying to get it to work the way I wanted it to. Um, but that's it, y'all. As always, feel free to drop questions. Let me know what you think. Um, again, the reason that I needed to do the this particular setup this way is by request of the show designer. He's a, he's a really good friend of mine. I'm also fortunate to have uh, continued um, my relationship with this particular program. I've been coming out here since 2019 and um, the program's really grown in terms of like being able to do really cool stuff like this. Um, and uh, again, all of the inputs and outputs that I did was um, because I wanted to please the show designer as well as give the group redundancy so that if the laptop, like if they're doing a phrase in the show where they are processing audio through Cubase, I don't want them to be reliant on the laptop to still get sound from those microphones. So like if they have a wireless channel, you know, maybe it's a flute solo or vocal, vocalist or something like that. If the laptop overheats or something like that, I wanna be able to pass that channel through the, directly through the console to the speakers with reverb and stuff and still have sort of that, that backup plan just in case. Um, Cause we dealt with some issues last year doing this type of idea. And I think this improves upon it uh, like a million times. So super long walkthrough. I know I've said that like five times. I'm super tired and thirsty and hungry. <laughs> but I appreciate y'all joining me uh, for this walkthrough. Again, the cabling for the microphones out there is pretty simple. It's all the stuff having to do with the console that's crazy. All right, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what's up. Looking forward to bringing y'all to the next one, which is going to be... I think uh, Saxy High School. Yeah, I'll see you there. Peace.